So how's it going guys? This is Rio Murata, photographer based in Tokyo. In this video, I'd like to sort of like display my super biased opinion view on this topic that has been, I guess, raging online maybe. So there are people who out there who shoot with a GW690 and you guys probably know that is my medium format film camera. And on the digital spectrum, you guys probably know the most affordable medium format digital is obviously the GFX system, camera system by Fujifilm. And honestly, I don't own a GFX camera or system. However, because I live in Tokyo, I regularly can try them out in stores. And this is sort of going to be my sort of like overall view of those two systems. Sort of like a comparison, not comparing the image quality or anything, but more like the costs and stuff like that. And I've would like to sort of like display my opinion on this topic not saying one is better or worse than the other but just my opinion on this topic so more like the benefits disadvantages advantages of owning either the gw690 versus the gfx system and then this video will be sort of like covering like six topics actually the cost of owning a gw690 mark three for the film and two the opportunities shooting with film stocks three the cost of maintaining a digital camera and also four is investing into peripherals such as you guys probably know you need various like film accessories if you shoot with the gw690 you need like film scanners and holders folders and stuff like that and on five i will be talking sort of like the autofocuses the pros of having that on a digital camera and last but not least least is when will the gfx camera pay off by itself compared to the gw690 so this is going to be a pretty long video so i've made time links in the description area below so just click on the ones that you guys want to see so yeah let's get going number one is basically the cost of owning the gw690 and honestly i can only say my personal experience from and you guys probably know i shoot with the kodak gold 200 which because I live in Tokyo, Japan, I have to pay for the shipping fee from BNH. So it's rather expensive than for people living in North America because that shipping fee it gets added up. And and I and honestly like shoot roughly three to four rolls of Kodak Gold 120 per month. And roughly for the price, it's when I do the calculation, it's roughly $14 per roll to shoot one roll of 120 medium format film. And on top of that, with the post-processing fee that I had to pay the lab to do it for me, I actually have to pay $8. So in total, I pay roughly $22 per roll to get it like processed. Multiply by four, and I get roughly $88 of expense per month. And when you do the calculations, $88 per month, multiplied by 12 that's what equates to one year that equates to roughly 1056 dollars usd in the first year and we combine that with the initial fee that you pay for the camera which right now costs roughly 700 800 dollars or so on the first year of using the gw690 the cost is roughly 1856 dollars actually total expense and this on the second year it becomes $2,912 and on the third year it becomes $3,968 a whooping US dollars and then on the fourth year it becomes $4,768 and on the fifth year of using the exact same camera exact same Kodak 120 uh, 120 medium format film you are paying roughly $6,080 to use that camera along with the film and the post-processing that is being involved in the operating that camera and not offending anyone or anybody actually i'm just saying the like the real truth to you guys and that's just shooting with the cheapest film stocks obviously if you live in north america like i said you can purchase films at a cheaper price actually and you can basically cut the cost there however i live in tokyo japan i can't do that but like i said that's shooting with the cheapest film stocks and other film stocks that are being available especially monochrome reversal in japan call it reversal you guys call it slide films or some kind of uh xlr type of film stocks is gonna 
cost much more and in the long run you're actually paying much more than the price i just said so this is basically a sort of like a, giving you guys an idea of how much it would cost for owning the gw690 and uh, years to come actually obviously this goes into number two of having the extra opportunities shooting with gw690 and any kind of medium format film camera which is you get more opportunities shooting various types of film stocks obviously Fuji films out of the color negative space unfortunately but you have a lot of like possibilities you can choose whether or not to shoot with color negatives you can shoot with black and white monochromes or you could shoot with side films and also there are brands such as Cinestill making new film stocks and Lomography actually they're starting to make newer film stocks for the public and more options are being available which you cannot achieve on digital unfortunately because in, for digital you're like stuck with a color profile and at the same time you had to sort of like build a foundation on that like go towards the digital topic after like saying how much it would cost over the course of the years we have to take notice right here that the cost of digital and like i said on the third year of using the gw690 you're using roughly three thousand nine hundred and sixty eight dollars which this price point as of 2023 and looking at the price of used gfx system camera system in tokyo roughly for 299,000 yen which is roughly two thousand dollars two thousand two hundred dollars you could get the gfx 50r actually at that price range and on top of that if you add a lens which is the kit lens at 35 to 70 if i'm right which costs 600 dollars you could get that set for roughly 2800 dollars and also when you include the sd cards batteries which would in total cost roughly 3000 us D, which means theoretically if i use my gw690 for three another three years from now on i can actually purchase a gfx 50r if i wanted that's the sort of like the truth be told, unfortunately. And obviously, GFX 50R is being, they don't manufacture it anymore. You can only buy it used. Right now, they sell the GFX 50S Mark II, actually, right now, as of 2023, which costs a little bit more, but that set still costs roughly $3,200, actually, when you include the kit lens and stuff like that and the batteries and stuff like that. So honestly speaking, that's, like really shocking to hear you have to take into consideration that you have to purchase peripherals if you're shooting with the film camera obviously if you like let a lab scan all your photos that's going to be really expensive in the long run so typically the majority of you guys or majority hopefully will purchase some kind of a flatbed scanner which costs roughly three hundred dollars to up to one thousand dollars and there are those small like things that you need to purchase such as folders binders to put in your color negatives and also not to mention you have to purchase like hard drives to save all your scanned color negatives or black and white like film negatives scan it to your pc save it on a hard drive those like costs add up much more quicker compared to shooting with digital because if you're shooting with digital you just need just the hard drive and you're basically good to go in most cases Okay, so obviously I have to mention that the sort of like the benefits of having a camera that can do autofocus, this is going to be my personal opinion on it. But if you use a fully manual camera, you have to be like really super concentrated on what you're shooting or else you're gonna miss focus. So you have to be like really precise. You have to take your time to get it right or else you're gonna like like founder like in, <laughs> in that process. However, if you have a camera that can autofocus focus, What's interesting is you don't have to be 100% concentrated most of the time because the camera is doing half the job for you of getting it in focus. And that time that you're saving for like shooting more keepers, you will get a higher chance of getting more keepers if the autofocus works actually. So this is sort of like, will like depend on that person if you like shooting with manual or not. But depending on if it's a sort of like a job and you're like, 
you're super concentrated 100% of the time throughout the day, that's going to warn you out if you use a fully manual camera. So honestly speaking, there is that sort of like benefit of using a camera that has autofocus and that's basically the reason why a lot of people use the GFX system just because it's like much more efficient and you can get a high res image from that camera system. And I also have to mention that there are third party manufacturers such as TT Artisans, Zhongyi Optics, and also Seven Artisans. They actually make lenses for the GFX system that does not have autofocus. So they're fully manual focus type of lenses. And like I said, you can basically use these manual focus types of lenses on the GFX system. If you don't like the autofocus mechanism, you can basically use your hand to focus. And because it's a mirrorless camera, you can basically do focus peaking and which is like really easy to do and much more efficient. So there are a lot of like ways of going around this autofocus, but for some people it might like it. Some people might hate it, but it exists for a reason. So when will this GFX system pay off? And honestly, in my case, it will start paying off on my third year of using the exact same time duration of the GW690 Mark III at its current pace of four rolls per month. However, this gets really iffy because depending on what kind of lenses you're gonna purchase for the GFX ca camera, that runtime of when it will start paying off will differ significantly. And in this example, in this video, I talked only about the kit lens, the 35 to 70 mil, which costs $600 used in Japan actually. For reference, however, there are much more expensive primes for the GFX system, such as the famous 80mm 1.7 uh, G mount ones, which go up for $2,000. <laughs> if you purchase that in a combination with a GFX system, obviously it might take three or maybe four or five years for it to like pay off. And also, I also have to mention, if you use that GFX system much more frequently, let's say you're like shooting two times more than you usually do. Obviously, your run, run time on that and when it starts paying off will get cut in half. So instead of three years, it will become 1.5 years, one in a year and half. You might actually actually get more benefits from using that camera system. So it's like really, it's like really hard to like say it, give you guys the verdict of when it will start paying off. But in my case, roughly two to three years the GFX system will pay off. But last but not least, I have to like mention that the GW690 system, the great thing about that camera system is that you're stuck with just one damn focal length and it's all in one package. It's fully mechanical, no like wiring, no batteries, no SD cards. You get a peace of mind because that's what it is. It's a basically a range finder camera with a fixed focal length and you get Although there are so many limitations, there are so many possibilities. Like I said, you have like a lot of film stocks to choose from. There's Cinesto 100T, 400D, Portra, you have Kodak Gold. There's like countless numbers of film stocks and variations to choose from, which make this sort of like camera really unique and a league of its own. So yeah, and people might call it the poor man's Leica. It's called the damn Texas Leica. That's why people love it, you know, Texas is awesome. So, so I'm going a little bit off topic. So yeah, hopefully I did not cover everything, but I guess what people wanted to hear. So all in all, I basically talked or maybe only grazed the surface of the GFX system and the GW690. And I did not want to like say which one is better, but to give you guys an idea of that cost performance type of idea of when it starts to pay off, I thought it might make sense for some people because people who watch my videos on the GW690. And there are people out there who are thinking of going to the GFX route. And like I said, I guess the longer you use that system, it's going to pay off significantly faster than what I have imagined before I did the calculations. So yeah, and at the same time, I have to mention that film is expensive, but I just love shooting with it. So will I sh shift to towards the GFX system? Not yet. However, I'm kind of skeptical because if the price of film prices go beyond my expectations, there is that chance that I might have to go to that route. And also because 
processing those films in a lab is actually getting much more expensive than like a couple of years ago that cost keeps adding up in the long run so yeah hope you guys enjoyed this video hope you guys find that found it like informative and if you have any questions if you have any inquiries or if you have any comments i'm happy to reply so yeah hopefully this video is not too long but i hope you guys enjoyed it so yeah we will see you next time peace out